Namaste ji. I am Shreyan Shah and I am Nikhilesh. And recently we got a chance to visit Bhuttiko or Bhutti Colony which is actually a society of weavers where they live and work within the same campus. They gave us a very good walk through of how raw wool is turned into beautiful kullu shawls and topis. In this video, we will focus on how yarn is selected, processed and is turned into beautiful kullu shawls. So let's begin. Bhutiko is leading name in shawl industry and its weavers have earned respect and recognition in the world of weaving. Bhutiko import the yarn from Bansal and Jashi industries. Imported wool is already dyed and then spun into yarn rolls later. Types of wool used is poly wool, angora wool, merino wool and pashmina wool. Wools are graded and they are given specific numbers ranging from 144 to 290 according to the microns of wool. The lower the number, the finer the fabric. Merino is the finest with the value of 18.5 micron. The next step is testing. The wool is tested thoroughly through various machines for optimal quality checks. Through machines, they check the purity, thickness, softness, color, twist degree and abrasion of the wool. After successful completion of test, the wool is ready for the next process. This machine is called Nuddy Wider. It is used for spinning yarns into rolls which ultimately speeds up the whole process. First step of weaving is setting up the warp. For this, yarns are unwound from their cones, threaded through a wire heel, rolled onto a large warping drum called tana drum and are finally wound on a warp beam. The bigger the warping drum, the larger the warp. Yarns are rolled on the drum according to the design. Charkha is still used for spinning yarn despite modern advancements. These people are working with these traditional methods for more than 35 years now. In weaving, the weavers fixes a fly shuttle with the desired weft yarn, that is the yarn that will make the horizontal width of the shawl. The shuttle is then passed between the warp yarn, building the fabric thread by thread. The hand loom weaving process on old style frame looms requires the hands to work above while the feet work with the paddles below, moving the shafts up and down and with it the warp yarns. A weaver pulls on the pulley attached to the shuttle to move it across. The constant clacking of the wooden shuttle, the shafts and the beater are all part of the weaver's life. Kullu has been famous for its shawl with easy geometrical patterns and bright colors. Colors like red, yellow, magenta pink, green, orange, blue, black and white are used for patterning. White, black and natural grey or brown are used as the base in the shawls. For weavers, these designs are already set in their mind. They follow pre-planned patterns on graph papers or through sketches. Bhuttiko collaborated with NID for recent advancements and modifications in their existing patterns. They have been modifying these designs continuously to cater the market needs. Weavers used to ideate new designs on graph paper by using sketch pen and all these designs are saved in their files. Most edging that comes off from the hand looms are considered complete only when the end pieces are tasseled to prevent threads from opening up at the end. A careful tidying up of minor threads and flaws takes place as a form of quality checking. After this, the logo and the trademark are stitched on the shawl from the sewing machine. Kullu Caps, the glorious crown of Himachal Pradesh, is now a recognized fashion logo in every hue. Colorful caps fascinate everyone at first instance. It is an important part of local man's attire. The kullu cap is round in shape and flat on the top. A band of colorful border known as patti is separately woven on looms, then attached to the back portion which covers the head. Bukram is added in topi for structure and strength. The caps are fixed on a round wooden block and then steam pressed to attain the round shape. Caps are available in different head sizes ranging from 4 to 
Woolen shawls are sent for washing after the weaving process. After washing, the shawls are dried in huge dryer machines and then steam pressed in large rollers for an even surface. The finished products are then taken to the finishing unit where they are sorted according to the type and the prices. Each product gets a tag with a serial number and then they are ready to be taken to the showroom. Butico sells its products online too on Amazon and on their own websites. All the online orders are packed here only. Butico is not limited to just making shawls and topis, they also make coats, ties, sarees, mufflers, mask and purse made from waste fabric. Although some products like purse are manufactured in Delhi and then sent back to the main plant. The products of the society are not only popular with Indian customers, but their products are also popular with foreign customers. Products are exported to countries such as Belgium, France, Britain, Japan, China, Spain, Russia and USA. There are total of 31 outlets. All the products are shipped to them according to the demand via the finishing unit. Every staff member in Bhutico knows how to weave and hence there is a weaving culture and respect for weavers of Bhutico. The prices of shawls are non-negotiable and are same in every store. Society is providing employment to over 1000 weaver families. They have made economic development amongst the handloom weaver members. Society also gives bonuses on income along with EPF and housing for weavers. They also set up looms in far away villages where people are ready to learn and join. Every year, Bhutico participates in many national and international exhibitions. Bhutico's caliber has been recognized both by its customers and governing authorities, and they have been honored with many awards, like National Award Gold in 1993. Udyog Ratna Award in 2005, National Cooperative Excellency Award in 2009, and multiple national awards. They celebrate multiple functions in their auditorium too. Bhutico is not only a leading producer, but an inspiration for artisans across India with its focus on weavers' welfare and self-guarding their craft.